so for this video I definitely want to start with the newest and come back to the oldest uh, I think the newest installment is probably one of the most divisive in the franchise at least in recent years and we'll see kind of where that goes now I know Halloween ends is slated to come out this fall and I'm probably gonna have to update this tier list but I really wanted to put something like this together since it's a lot of fun and we could kind of cause some discussion so with that let's start with Halloween kills this film is pretty divisive to Halloween fans because it kind of brings different elements from different parts of the franchise into the film and kind of makes its own own thing. I think one of the downfalls to this movie is that it was announced alongside with Halloween Ends. So a lot of people knew coming into this film that it wasn't going to be the end of the Definitive Meyer story. It wasn't going to really add too much to it. And this is kind of the, how would you say, two towers of the of the trilogy. <laughs> Instead, uh, we're kind of waiting for Return of the King, if you want to put it in Lord of the Rings talk. But I think, from a fan's perspective, there's a lot good coming from this movie. James Duke Courtney does a great job, again, as Michael Myers, and really makes the role his own. Some of the scenes that are just fantastic always include James Duke Courtney. The choreography, the physicalness of this Myers is probably one of the more aggressive Myers since the Rob Zombie franchise, and rightfully so. I think this film kind of shows that the attitude that Michael is angry, and he is he's taking it out on Haddonfield, really. I like the mob mentality. I like the idea that it's separating Laurie a little bit from the story, and kind of Haddonfield is pushing back against Michael now. Halloween 2018 was setting up that not only Laurie Strode was affected by this, like the trauma that the town of Haddonfield is slowly starting to eke out in 2018. They they mention Hawkins being the arresting officer, and in some of the opening scenes in Halloween Kills at the bar, all the survivors are basically talking about their stories with Michael. I think it's an interesting way to pull the series, and I think it's smart considering that they eliminated the sibling story from the original movie but the physicalness and the brutality it's uh really something to to look at this film it's really it, it's never really felt at home in the franchise this feels like a natural progression that michael would have into this brutal kind of artistic the way he sets his victims up after the fact it's all harkening back to that 1978 and boy does it do well for me the dialogue's not great at points i don't like the extended hospital stuff but overall I think this is one of the better sequels in the franchise, and I'm actually going to start it off in the A category. Now on to the next one, we're doing Halloween 2018. So this was obviously the uh, happening before Halloween Kills, and it sets up the events for Halloween Kills, and this was kind of the uh, Force Awakens treatment to the Halloween franchise. But I will definitely say that this was way better than that. <laughs> this. Uh, took the the legacy characters it took laurie strode it made it her movie it made it you know really reflecting on the trauma uh, with laurie showing her strong exterior when she's talking to allison before but her breaking down in the in the restaurant really shows that you know in this moment it's really getting to her you know the trauma's not gone she's not this hardened individual she's still you know susceptible to these feelings the way that the film shows it the way that they put emphasis on that trauma and the way that they uh, portray Halloween for a new generation while still staying true to the original is is really good. I mean, it broke records for being the highest grossing slasher movie in theaters, and rightfully so. So this is another easy one. This one's going in the A category. I'm going to put it above Halloween Kills because I think the weight of Halloween uh, 2018 is a little more than Halloween Kills. I think the story is something new, whereas Halloween Kills, it was just a kind of Michael on display, which is nothing wrong with that. It was a great sequel. So we're going to put Halloween 2018 above Halloween Kills on the A scale. Still really good. <clears throat> this is where we get to the interesting section. Um, for Halloween 2 by Rob Zombie, I'm, I'm going to take a look at the director's cut as my definitive version for this movie. I think the added scenes with Brad Dourif, I think the added scenes with uh, Scout turning her into a more uh, trauma victim as opposed to 
maybe a more recovered version of herself in the three theatrical version. Uh, it, it fits Rob Zombie's tone a little better. I think that a lot of the imagery in this movie is really cool. The dream sequences are really interesting, but it just doesn't feel Halloween to me. And and some of the characters are even like more likable in this movie than they are in the, the first installation in Rob Zombie series. I just think that Halloween 2 is trying to do a little too much different. Appreciate the attempt of what he's trying to do, but the story just didn't stick with me. I don't like the family ghost storyline or the white horse or any of that nonsense. I hate the Dag Ferris re recast. I would have rather them just keep that out if they had to recast him. If, if it was to the point where Dag was looking too old or looking too, you know, whatever, they should have just not went with the young Michael Myers scenes in the film. I think they are better off just leaving that alone and maybe doing audio or something But because it's really noticeable. It bothers me. <laughs> I think it takes away from the Smith's Grove and kind of my gripe that I'm going to get into with Rob Zombie's Halloween. It's just telling me too much stuff. It's making me assume too much stuff. So Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, although it's it's interesting and fun, I hate the ending in both versions. Uh, I think the theatrical one is a little better, but I think the overall film, what they're trying to do is better in the director's cut. Laurie is supposedly to die in the theatrical, which makes a little more sense because of how the ending kind of plans out. But in the director's cut, it's not super clear. Plus, Michael talks, and I just can't get over that. I don't like the Mountain Man thing. I think the poster art for Hall Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 is one of the best with that mask. But the tragedy of that is you only see him for <laughs> maybe 15 or 20 minutes as this Michael. The rest is the torn hobo mask with the big coat with the big beard, the big long hair, Tyler Maine, Hobo Myers, I just don't like it. And this is going to be a D tier for me. It's one of the worst in the franchise. I just can't get over its faults to rank it any higher. Uh, now we're on to the remake. Um, I know a lot of people like the remake. I know a lot of people like the look into Michael Myers' uh, motivation in the franchise. But to me, it's not Halloween. It's not what makes Michael interesting to me. It's not what makes Michael Michael to me. Uh, so I, I think right off the bat, they spend way too much time in the backstory, and that makes the rest of the movie suffer, in my opinion. I'm not listening! Um, I think the length of the film, I think it's around 112 minutes runtime. It feels like it's it's hours and hours long. This movie is very poorly paced. I do like the cast that they picked, uh, Scout, Danielle, and I guess I think his name's Christine Klebe, uh is the other one. I think they were awesome choices for the for the cast, and that's one of my favorite parts about this movie is the cast, even down to Ken Foray as uh, Joe Grizzly. I got a Taco Deluxe Supreme talking back at me, so I'm going to be a while. Unfortunately, they're just in a bad movie. It's just a bad movie to me. I think the theatrical cut is much, much, much better than the director's cut. I don't know if it's because it's less zombified, but for me, the fact that we we didn't have this extended breakfast scene that's just ridiculous. Bitch, I will crawl over there! We didn't have this escape scene, rape scene. I, I just don't understand like why we have to have this in this franchise, in the remake of, of Halloween. I just don't. Make a separate movie with, with your social commentary that this stuff actually happened in the whatever whatevers i don't care i think it's sleazy the language is like really bad and, and it's, it's not that i'm opposed to bad language it just the writing just doesn't make sense like the extreme of zero to 100 miles an hour in severity i just don't get it i just don't get the like what, what the transition is you know i will say so there were some scenes i did really like especially in the beginning with the mom's boyfriend or whatever when he is watching the horror movies uh, with Michael and he's kind of teasing him or whatever. I think that's one of the highlights of the film. I digress. I could talk about how I don't like this movie all day long. And I think it would be good later down the road to review these films one at a time to give their due diligence. But definitely Rob Zombie, theatrical cut. I'm going to say that it's just a hair better 
than Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 in the D tier. I might sound a little biased, but <laughs> I'm okay with that. <laughs> now we're moving on to Halloween Resurrection. I know this is bottom of the barrel for a lot of people, but I really try to find something that I like about these movies. When I compare them to other installments of the franchise, it's not my most hated movie. The opening was really cool. I, I liked how Laurie ended up in Smith's Grove after the events of H2O. I liked how Michael looked in this scene. I love his interaction with the other, I guess it would be patients. Pretty funny, honestly. <laughs> how Michael is being uh, characterized as up with Gacy or Bundy or whatever that he's talking about. I think that's, that's interesting and kind of sets it in real world, which is pretty cool. But that scene is really good all the way up to the last part of it, <laughs> all the way up until uh, Lori dies. Uh, <laughs> so I think that that's a really crappy send off for Lori Strode, especially if we're eight films deep in the franchise. It, even if they didn't want her to be a main character, I don't know. Find something else to do with Laurie Strode. <laughs> Put that scene at the end. Make the, the podcast streaming live event that Dangertainment does. Make that the front of the movie and put Lori's at the Lori scene at the end. I don't know. It just doesn't, <laughs> it, it's not a very good feeling to start the film on such a note. And then we lose the characters that we care about to just start over. I think resurrection would honestly look a little better if it were a part of a different timeline. <laughs> like if they did something similar to this in the new Halloween David Gordon Green, if they did something similar to this, I don't think it would be as bad as this. I think the issue is the motivation. You're you're four movies deep in this timeline of this family connection. He finally breaks it and kills Laurie Strode, and now all of a sudden he wants to go home and kill all these intruders. Like, if this was a part of the David Gordon Green if timeline you would have the connection to his house. So you would be like, oh, of course he's going to come home and call these idiot podcasters and streamers because they're in his house. But I digress. It's not a part of that. We're just speculating. But <laughs> I think that uh, I, I think regardless of what, you know, of what bad there are, I, I think this isn't the worst film in the franchise. I really don't. I think uh, it suffers from early 2000s horror, which I cannot stand. I know <laughs> I can't stand slasher movies from the early 2000s, maybe outside of Freddy vs. Jason, but that's, God, that's more a comedy anyway. But I, I would put this at a C tier. I know that's going to get people upset, but I think that uh, I think this movie was better than Rob Zombie's movies just because of the weight it had with Laurie Strode. And there were some highlights. I mean, Buster Rhymes, I know that's the easy target, but he had genuine scenes with the characters in the build up what he was doing. He was the most believable actor out of all of them. The scene that he had with, uh, I can't even think of the main character's name anymore. <laughs> and I just watched this movie maybe last year. <laughs> or the part in the film where she comes to drop out of the experiment. You know, that speech he gives, you know, it's very believable. And after the fact, he even says, you know, I got her kind of thing. Like, that that's funny to me. Like, that's something that a con man would be trying to do. He's a good actor in this movie. You know, it, yeah, the, the easy ones to pick out is the trick-or-treat and the the kung fu parts and the part where he's being goofy with Michael and, you know, telling him to get the hell out of the house kind of thing. I left the back door unlocked for your ass to go out the back into the garage. I, I think people are hanging on too much of the ridiculous of, of that and, like, passing on the rest of the dialogue in the movie. He's a very real character. Where are these other people are just ditzy, dumbass college kids that are just stereotypical. But whatever <laughs> it's a c for me <laughs> it's halloween h2o i think this movie would be so so much better if it weren't for the inconsistencies with the mask h2o with its shooting had a lot of issues with the mask they've had to do reshoots they had to do different days on sets with different masks it was just chaos when they had to reshoot certain parts they had to actually cgi masks and it didn't look great this movie just suffered a lot from that uh this gives a lot of scream vibes because I, I i see a lot of scream in this even down to the cover halloween h2o's cover <laughs> is almost a knock 
to scream. <laughs> you know, it's not like what we're used to. I love the story. I feel like the pacing, this movie, they nailed the pace. They absolutely nailed this pace of the movie. I could watch this movie all the time and never really get bored with it. They they nail how the progression of these characters. They nail the progression of the plot. It's, it's really good to me. I, I think it's really good. But it's just not as good as, you know, a 2018 or a Halloween Kills. If you ask me where this film would rank in the franchise 10 years ago, it would be an A tier. But because of what we have now with the 2018, I, I mean, it's it's a B tier. H2O was one of my introductories into the series, so I'll always have a, spot, a soft spot for it, but I think with what we have now, it's just middle of the road. It's not, it's not as good. Okay, so we're moving on to what uh, the tail end of what people would call the Thorn Trilogy, and we're in Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers. The version of this film that we're going to take a look at today is uh, the theatrical version, of, is the version I prefer. Some of the aspects of this movie that are in question, the Thorn story with the call of Michael's motivation, I, I think this series just kind of got away from itself in trying to explain what's happening. And after so many movies, I understand it because eventually people are going to be like, well, why is he still chasing these people? Like there has to be, you know, there can't be just no motive anymore. We're seven movies deep or six movies deep. I get it. The issue is it's just stupid. Like it's a stupid story. <laughs> um, I, I think the family line wanting to extend it by making jamie have a kid but then killing jamie like i just don't understand it i don't see what they're doing with the story like what's the motivation of this group do they want michael to live forever do they want him to kill the family and end the do they have the same motives as everybody else do they want to continue the storyline do they want to make a new michael like what that none of that is explained like in it and if any of that was explained, we would be able to see maybe where they they were going with this movie. <laughs> and I just, I just can't. The only reason I like this movie at all is I, I love the aesthetic to this movie. I know that that's the, the easy, <laughs> the easy thing to say that you like about some of these movies, because I'm a little biased. I love Halloween season in general, but this movie could have been so good just based on the tone of the film. You know, that fair that they had, attitude of the uh, kids, mainly the brother. I think he's a great character. I think he'd be funny to have towards the end. I think Karen Strode, or Kara Strode, I guess, was a solid, solid final girl. I loved the radio station with uh, Barry Sims. I thought that was cool. I thought people called Falling in and kind of the whole banning of Halloween thing. This movie had a lot going for it. I just think that the execution and integrating Thorn into all of it is just a stupid convoluted mess. The only reason I didn't pick the director's cut over the theatrical is because it, it lowers the aesthetic and the ending with Dr. Loomis supposedly taking the role of Dr. Wynn as Michael's guardian, <laughs> again, just doesn't make sense to me. I, I just, <laughs> it sounds like I really hate this movie, but it's not as bad as some of the others. <laughs> so, um, but to put this in, uh, in terms, I, this is a C for me, uh, but I, it, it's above resurrection just because there's some traditional Halloween in there. I like it. So moving on to Halloween five, man, th this is honestly one of my least favorite in the franchise, if not the least in, in the franchise. Uh, I'm trying to be a little more objective, uh, but when you're dealing with subjective things like what's your favorite movie or what where they rank on a list like this one is a real stinker for me um, and I'll tell you why because Halloween 4 had such a cool build up at the end the ending was kind of a twist ending it, it kind of was moving the series in the right direction and we got a group of people into Halloween 5 that just did not care that did not care about what the what this franchise was going what the direction they were going they just wanted to make a movie and they didn't really have have any sort of background on the character they know that michael myers is her uncle they didn't really have any like this is what it appears to me by watching the movie i they they may have had different intentions maybe editing got to it i don't know i'm just ma making this based on what i know and and what i what i see on the screen with the momentum of halloween 4 and you give us this it's just kind of it's it's awful i i think making danielle harris mute for half the movie is really dumb if they're going to get rid of uh Rachel's character in the first 10 to 15 minutes of the movie, then they need to let Danielle Harris 
Daenerys have her movie then. They need to let her talk more, do more. The fact that she's a patient or whatever is fine, but you're going to let this new character come in and just kind of take over the movie. With no no attachment to anyone besides her being the main character's stepsister's friend. Like, what are they doing in this movie? I, I just, uh, I just don't, I just don't like it. The friends of the friend are the, the people that are being killed throughout this movie. Like, the, there is nothing to this movie that resembles anything to the main story or to the original film. They should ban Halloween in this town. The Myers house looks like a gothic Victorian mansion. Like, it's just, it what kind of mess is this the mask is I, the mask is growing on me i used to hate it with the long neck but <laughs> i think the the flatness and the longer hair is actually kind of cool i think the kills are in general pretty decent uh the mike character which is the oh my god tina's boyfriend or whatever he's probably one of the highlights of the movie because he's such an asshole and he you're kind of okay with him <laughs> meeting his fate in the movie but he's still entertaining like every scene that he's in is entertaining uh, everything else is just off the rails cuckoo crazy like dr loomis is not great in this movie i think this is the worst outing for dr loomis just doesn't feel like dr loomis anymore like maybe he's beyond pissed he's like all right it's been five movies i need to get this bastard kind of thing I just really dislike this movie. <laughs> I think the ending is awful. Leading into six, I think this man in black character could be why Halloween six is so bad. If they didn't have to entail that man in black crap or thorn stuff into Halloween six, it would have been a much better movie, but they had to clean up all these loose ends. So yeah, screw Halloween five. It's a D. I don't like that story. Uh, moving on to Halloween four, this is the return of Michael Myers. Uh, after Halloween 3, where we didn't have Michael, uh, fans wanted him back, but we'll get to that later. If you don't find him in four hours, I'm sure I will. I think Halloween 4 is a great movie for the franchise. It was a good restart. Uh, it started a new storyline with Jamie. Had uh, kind of the Laurie Strode getting killed off screen kind of thing and showed us, you know, what the aftermath of Halloween 2 without her would look like. And honestly, it's a solid movie. I really don't have much to say about this movie. I, I think that it, it copies a lot of what made Halloween great. And I think that it uh, deserves a pretty decent spot. So I'm going to give it a, a B, but ahead of Halloween H2O. Uh, here's another controversial one. We started off with kills, and now we're at the second one that likes to anger people in the franchise. And that's Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. Um, I think this movie on its own is awesome. I I love the cast. I think Tom Atkins is great. Come on, come on, come on. The guy that they had to play, Colonel Cochran, is awesome. I think the small cast is to its benefit. I think that uh, going to this mask making factory with ulterior motives is very interesting the twist towards the middle of the movie you understand that these masks that are selling out like hotcakes to all the kids in the area are uh are killing them <laughs> and i think that's awesome it's super brutal i think the imagery in this movie is awesome uh when the mask turns the first time that kid uh in the testing room we still we see the real meat and potatoes that's a, a genuine scare in my opinion and I think that's that's just unsettling in the coolest way. Uh, I love the speech that Colonel Cochran gives about the uh, uh, heritage that he has along with Season of Samhain and, you know, playing the tricks on the kids and all that good stuff. That is a very Dr. Loomis style speech, but in an evil way. <laughs> so that's very cool. I think the soundtrack's great. John Carpenter did this, the, the cast on this. Tommy Lee Wallace directed. So the DNA to the original Halloween film is through the roof. You could tell they just wanted to do something different. They didn't want to have a franchise. Just got past Halloween 2 and they're like, okay, we killed Michael. Let's move move on. We, are, we killed him. Uh, so they're doing more of a Tales from the Crypt film and like 
it works for me. I like it, and I consider it a part of the Halloween franchise. I think that the people that were involved in making this film earned its stripes, the title. If, if it only has the title, that's fine with me, <laughs> because I think the theme that this movie has going for it is more Halloween than the, ha- ba- the back half of the franchise. And I will say that, and although I don't think s- Halloween Season of the Witch is an A, I'm I'm going to put it, it's a solid B. I'm going to put it behind Halloween 4 and ahead of Halloween H2O. And to me, that that's really high. <laughs> I, to me, that's high. It's one of my favorite films in the franchise. I think it's a lot of fun. The jingle with Silver Shamrock, the imagery with Silver Shamrock, it is it is awesome. I, I love the movie. It's it's great. I, I have fun every time I watch it. Eight, four days to Halloween. Turn that down. So... Halloween 3 Season of the Witch, B tier. Uh, now on to Halloween 2. Uh, this movie, I, I loved this movie as a kid. Uh, it was the one that was on TV a lot for me. I remember when we had the pay-per-view channels, you would see what you could buy. <laughs> and one of the times that I was watching this channel, um, Halloween 2 was on the reel. You know, it was all the trailers. And uh, I watched probably six or seven times in a row. Not even a few weeks later on USA, they showed it on, on TV. So I finally got to watch the film. I thought the uh, the iconic scene of Lori screaming, help me. Help me! Whenever Dr. Loomis goes into the hospital at the end, it just really sticks out to me. I love the characters in this movie. The paramedics just crack me up amazing grace uh especially bud uh, <laughs> i think he's like a product of his time and i i love him so much i think the direct sequel to 1978 was super cool i i love the idea that it, it's kind of building uh the myers mythos what? I shot him six times. This is the clear family motive, and that's the twist in this movie where they find out Lori is Michael's sister. And I think that part is so, so crucial to the rest of the franchise. Tell the shit if I shot him. So whether how you want to look at what timeline suits you, Halloween 2 is always going to be there unless you're a part of the new trilogy. The only thing that, that's keeping this movie from an S for me is the pacing in the middle. I mean, it's an A for me. I just, the struggle is where to put it. <laughs> and so uh, I think it's better than Halloween Kills, but I think Halloween 2018 ekes out Halloween 2 just a little bit. And that's just because of the pacing just a little bit. Like there's some boring stuff in Halloween 2, but I still love it. This is one of my favorite Halloween movies to just sit on a Sunday afternoon and take a nap and wake up at the end and then you're in the good stuff. <laughs> so like I watch these movies a lot, so there it's a very comfort movie for me, Halloween 2. I love the soundtrack. I love the synthy organ theme of this movie. It's great. That's great. And I also love on the television version, the cop <laughs> that does the line delivery to uh, Sheriff Brackett about Annie, like in the TV version. It's like so over dramatized. Like, yeah, it's a scary thing where he's like three bodies were discovered upstairs and one of them was Annie. But in the TV version, he just like screams it. Lee, one of them was Annie. What? And it just makes me laugh every single time. That that always makes me laugh when I watch the TV version. But again, it's an A tier, and I'm going to put it in between Halloween Kills and Halloween 2018. Okay, so <laughs> I made this list because I don't think anything touches uh, 1978 in, in terms of tone, in terms of soundtrack, in terms of uh, everything i this is why this tier list is made this is this is why so many fans make tier lists this is why halloween fans love tier lists this is why everybody loves ranking these movies this is why like because of this film existing but damn i don't think any film here comes close to 1978 the reason why is because i mean they're all trying to copy it so halloween 2018 halloween kills uh with the flashback scene which i freaking love that i wish they would have just ran that whole movie on that flashback scene i'd have been okay with it halloween 2 you know it's just trying to pick up on what halloween 1 made tell the shit if i shot him and there's nothing wrong with that if you're trying to mess with uh michael myers this is it you know, this if you if you're not familiar with the franchise, you know, 
educate yourself <laughs> like the first halloween movie it is perfection in my eyes as far as like what a horror movie should be what a classic horror movie should be the the pacing the the music the stalking you know what what the other movies kind of forget about along the way this is it you know so I, it might have come to no surprise i should have had the tagline you know number one will shock you but it wasn't shocking anybody i think the most shocking thing is i don't put any other one on s tier because in my opinion that's sacrilege i think if you're going to say that halloween 2 is as good as halloween 1 i i just think you're missing the point or if anything you can make a separate list and not rank halloween 1 and just put it at the top because it's just taking its own category and everything else should be moved up <laughs> a, a tier however you want to look at it but th it's the ultimate in my in my opinion it's eh, it's really a no-brainer so i hope you like the tier list i think this is a really fun experiment i think uh in the future i would definitely love to do uh, more tier list on some of the other horror franchises or horror media out there i can't wait for halloween ends so we can update this again and where i will have watched these movies probably another couple times since then i've probably watched them all minimum five times uh so i i feel like i have a very educated opinion on these films but that's it's my opinion so some people might not like where i rank these movies and that's great and i hope you tell me in the comments why i'm so wrong or why <laughs> or why you agree with me uh because i love these kind of discussions i think it's fun when it's civil and uh people can bring up their favorite parts of the movies or their favorite entries in the franchise that maybe didn't uh hit very well with me because sometimes my opinions on these change i mean if you like i said if you would have asked me 10 years ago h2o 2 and 4 would all be a tiers that's what's so fun about stuff like this because it's it's not it's not something that has to be concrete so it's pretty fun to do so thanks for sticking with me um i uh i appreciate that and i hope you enjoyed the uh commentary on that if you're interested in movie reviews if you want me to kind of take one film piece by piece and go through it i'd be happy to do that um i have figure reviews also for the halloween franchise as well as others coming if you like the content please like comment and subscribe uh, i'd be great to kind of build a community out of what we're doing here so if you enjoyed please do that but other than that thanks so much for watching and uh I'll see you on the next one